All right, so my goal in this video is to summarize all the key concepts and ideas in chapter one while still making it very quality. And I'm gonna try to do it as fast as I can. And again, I'm gonna try to keep it high quality so that even those of you that are slacking off and waiting until the last minute can you know, pass that chapter one test. So here I go. All right, so in chapter one, the big idea is essentially to ask like, how do we, like, how do we analyze data? Like, that's the whole big picture in statistics. Like, how do we study data? How do we analyze data? Now, for that, there's going to be a whole bunch, you know, things, terms, strategies, um, tools, mathematical, you know, concepts that we need to know. So let's look at an example problem to help me, me like, you know, make sense of all this stuff. So we're just gonna look at a example um, free response problem from the um, AP exam. Now we're not gonna even worry about this part. I just want to look at this data so you can see it. So here we have data showing basically uh, the highest level of education that these um, 2,500 adults got or achieved throughout their lives and how they, um, absorb the news, like whether it's the newspapers, TV, cable TV, internet, or neither. So we want to see like, how are these two things related? So when you're, when you're studying data, you first need to know like, like what are the variables? What are the variables? And what are the individuals being studied? You first need to know that very basic stuff. So in this um, problem, the variables are the source of news here and the level of education. Level of education. And the uh, individuals are 2,500 adults. Then we need to know like, is the data categorical or quantitative? The categorical or quantitative? We need to know what that means. Categorical, if you recall, basically means that the data can be broken down into um, like groups um, that are not measured by a, by a, um, on, a, on a number scale. So like your hair color, car brand, um, dog breed. Quantitative is, you know, when it is measured on a number scale, like um, like your height, like your weight, how many hours you sleep per day. So here, the, the, the variables are categorical because these are the variables. The high school, or I mean the education level, which aren't quantitative or numbers, and the source of news. So it's categorical. Now, we need to be able to like make sense of what these numbers are showing. Like, 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 what do these numbers mean? And like, in terms of like this study, like, what does it tell us about these two variables and how they're related? So, um, we have a, this is a two-way table, as you can see, like going, you know, across and down. And we need to know, like, well. Like what um, calculation should I do to see if there is like a relationship between education level and the way you absorb the news? So what we could do is is see like well, is the percentage of people who didn't graduate high school and get n their news from the newspaper? Is this percentage, this 49, relatively speaking, different from like the college graduates who um, get their source of, um, you know, information from the newspapers? So what we would do is calculate a, a proportion. So we would take this 49 out of the 370.
and we would compare it to the 188 out of the 693. Because again, you can see each column is different and that's okay. It doesn't matter. Like we're not, like there's going to be different amounts of uh, people in each group, but that has nothing to do. Um, that's, not, that doesn't, that's not exactly what we um, care about. That's not the association because there's going to be, you know, people of different, you know, whatever, like attainments. But we want to see though, out of these people is the percentage that fall into each of these um, significantly different than the percentage that fall into each of these and and these. So 49, 49 out of 270 or 370 would get about 13% and 188 divided by 693. 27%. And I mean, just looking at this, I would say, yeah, man, there is there's a big difference, and there there probably is a relationship or an association between these two variables because this is almost two times. This is more than two times that. Now we need more um tools and more um, you know, knowledge um to to really um answer this for sure. To me, because again, we it's it could be something that we say is due to chance, which we're going to learn on later in the course. But for now, this is as far as you want to go. Now, um, after that, we want to, you know, again, apply that to all the stuff to all I mean to each variable across each row and see maybe maybe it was only maybe only it only happened there. Maybe it was a coincidence. I'm not going to do that here because, you know, um, the idea is just for you to um, understand that for now. Now, um, next, we want to understand that there are different types of graphs for um, different types of data. And we were looking at categorical data, but here we have box plots because we have quantitative data. So we need to understand when you have quantitative data, what's the, um, what's the graph, like what's, how is the data gonna be organized? And this will usually be through graphs such as box plots, Stem plots, dot plots, and histograms. The graph matters. And you and now we need to know well what's the best graph to use? And that's going to depend. So before we get to that, let's first make sure we know how to interpret these graphs. When it comes to interpreting graphs, we need to basically focus on these four key characteristics. So when we're describing data, we're gonna keep it simple because that's always good for, not just for the common folk, but just for everybody. Even like very, you know, high, high you know, sophisticated analysis. So when we're describing data, let's use the acronym called SOX. We want to know the shape. We want to know if there are any outliers, where the center is, and the spread. How does how the data vary? OK, so here we're comparing data. And this box plot, we're going to say it's um, you know, a roughly symmetric, we'll, we'll say. I use this for roughly, that's my symbol for roughly, but you can write the word if you want. This looks more like it's skewed left, a little bit. This tail over here, I mean, so you, you can maybe say, you can maybe say like slightly skewed left. And this one, um, also looks like it's it's um skewed left because from here to there is also um much bigger than the other end. So skewed left as well. Now when it comes to center, 
we look at a couple um, different measurements. We look at the mean, median, sometimes mode, but it's usually mean and median. Now, depending if the data is skewed or if it's symmetric, we're gonna use either the mean or median. When, when the data is about symmetric, we, we can say, so let's put symmetric. We use the mean. When the data is skewed, it's better to use the median. So for this, and actually, I made a I made a mistake. This is this is skewed right. Obviously, this is, this is very skewed right. Uh, I was checking to see if you guys were gonna pay attention and, and ca catch me on that. My bad. So they're all skewed. They're all skewed to one direction. Um, so we're gonna use the. It's probably best to use the median as our measure as our measure of center for all for, for each of them, especially when we're comparing data. Okay, um, now let's look at histograms. And we're gonna get back to this in just a minute. Here we have two histograms that are shown, you know, to compare the completion times for these students that were given this task. Um, and, you know, we wa they wanted to see like, how their um, times to complete the task compared based on, you know, um, let's see what, let's see what, um, oh, here's the base on whether or not they had previous, um, previous experience or no. So some of them had none. And some of them ha did have experience. And I guess what they're trying to um, get at is which one would be which. So this is probably the this is probably the one that did have it, because their times um, seem to be less, so they were they were faster. And and this group I would guess um, had no experience because their times seem to be longer overall. So another example of how you analyze data. Now, um, as you can see with histograms, they're broken into intervals. So make sure you understand that they're broken in, into intervals and you don't know exactly in the interval where the values are. You just know that there are a total of eight in here, but they could all be 35, um, they could all be 36, or they could all be bit different, we don't know. Um, so histograms are very good for a lot of, lot of data when you have a lot of data. Okay, now um, last couple of things when we get to um, calculation, we have to actually make our own um, graph. So here we have data that shows the amount of caffeine um, measured in milligrams. And then we're gonna try to you know, make a graph that would be best for this. So for something like this, um, when you don't have values very close together, when you have some variation, um, it's, I would, it's usually recommended to use, to use a box plot. And if you haven't learned to use your technology or calculator, let me show you. Very simple. If I can get the lighting right. Go to stat, go to edit, list, just enter these values there. 72, 55, 34, 45, 38, 70, 7 7.5, 165, 80, 105, 40, 35, enter and go to stat. I can calculate all my one variable statistics from there. 
mean, that'll give me my mean and my five number summary. So I mean I have 62.21-ish. And these five numbers, the min, Q1, uh, median, Q3, max, and I wish my lighting was better, sorry about that, are gonna let me um, figure out my box plot. So I can write it um, as a, it's usually written as a set. So 7.5 comma 36.5, 50, 76, and 165. And then we just make it, we make our best, um, um, you know, sketch of a box plot, you know, with these numbers. They don't, it just has to, you know, be roughly okay. You don't have to be like Picasso or anything. 36.5, Oh yeah, and I messed up definitely, but this should be farther out. But 165, let's say. 7.5, 36.5. Oh, I just freaking I forgot what I was. Well, you could just let your calculator do it. Duh. Go to stat plot. Turn one of your graphs on. Turn the other ones off. Let me get this light a little better. There we go. A little better. Okay, so I'm gonna use um, plot plot one, and you see like um, you see they see these two, they're both box plots, except this one shows outliers, this one doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna show you both. Press zoom, zoom stat, and as long as everything's okay, yeah, then I'll have another graph. Let me turn that off. Yeah, see, it's, sometimes that happens. There's a box plot. See that? See that tail here? Now you can press trace and even go over the values. Now, what about if you want to figure out that's um, an outlier? So we go back to our stat plot, and we use the other box plot, and. This will show outliers with the um, outliers being separated, see? So this is an outlier. So we have an outlier at 165. And the calculator and what most textbooks use is a 1.5 times the IQR rule for outliers. If there are more than 1.5 IQR units above or below, Q1 or Q3, Q1 and Q3, then I'll be an outlier. So this is an outlier. All right, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you can do all that, and obviously um, proficiently, you'll you'll do great on this test. So um, let me know if um, if you have any questions or if there's something that maybe I didn't explain clearly or I need to work on. Um, also, if you um, like this video or if you think um, you know these are helping you out, um, leave me a like and comment and subscribe. And let me know if you want, if you want me to keep on making these because um, I want to make sure that I help you, but I want to make sure that uh, um, <laughs> these videos don't suck. And I, so I need feedback. Um, all right, good luck in the school year, guys. And I'll, I'll see you guys next time.